So when you're working on a project and you're trying to define what the requirements are, there can be multiple sources of where these requirements may be coming from. It may be from your actual client, maybe even your sponsor, or if the end user is different than the client, there may be regulations at play. Um, it may have stemmed from a complaint from a client customer or something like that. Or maybe this is from uh, way up upper management being handed down. Or maybe there's a governing body over your particular industry um, that are setting out regulations within the industry. Why? Well, why would you use a requirements traceability matrix? Well, do you do only what you're told to do and never ask about the underlying reason for a particular requirement? Are you being given the actual solution? Are you being told how to do something instead of just what they want the end result to be? Do you have any way of distinguishing among the requirements as far as what you have to have versus what is just a nice to have? Have you ever been caught in the conversation where your client, air quotes there, is saying, well, tell me what you can do and then I'll tell you what it is that I actually want versus you trying to tell them, well, tell me what it is you want and then I'll tell you if we can do it or not or what we can do about it. So why ask why? Well, you need to ensure that you're providing the optimal solution or that you're getting the subject matter experts to weigh in on this and not just run with whatever you're being told to do. There may be a better way to do it. And also help with prioritization of the requirements, you know, just in case you run out of time um, at the end of the project. Of course, we know that never happens. Uh, also help you clarify the scope of the project, what's in scope, what's out of scope. If you get down to the wire, and you know what is a have to have versus a nice to have, then that may be helpful in weeding things out to save yourself some time. I also will help you connect the dots. If you understand underlying reasons or what is trying to be accomplished, then you may think of an impact to another area or something downstream that no one else has thought of before. So that's where it helps you connect the dots. Also, you can be an advocate during all phases of the project. If you understand why something is needed, you're able to explain that to other people downstream that may be questioning why this is in there in the first place. And also help you better prepare for testing, putting together your test scenarios to make sure that everything's going to work as expected. Also, will help you identify risks and any gaps. So what do you capture in a requirements traceability matrix? Well, there are numerous templates out there. So these are just a few of the things that you would capture, of course, assigning some sort of number to it and then providing a description. Source, where did the requirement come from? You may have multiple sources of your requirements. Priority, change control number, hopefully you've got some sort of governing body that will oversee changes to this. If there was a change, uh, that's what is meant there by modification. What was the actual change to the original requirement? Your user acceptance testing and any constraints. Again, this is just a very short list. So here's an example of a requirements traceability matrix from a scope management class and the project was to build a disaster survival shelter. So you see the first requirement is to have power for the, the shelter and we speci specifically identified a generator and we made a modification once we did a little research and changed the type of generator to be natural gas instead of diesel. And so there's a concern about the availability of diesel fuel. Uh, there still would be a concern around the availability of natural gas, but we figure we'll have a better chance of getting that um, than the diesel fuel. So we have a few pieces of information there as far as this something that we identified when we did our work breakdown structure. You could also link that back to if you're using Microsoft Project and link that back to a task ID. Uh, of course, we have user acceptance 
testing indicated there as far as, you know, did it work? Did it pass or fail the test? And then the resource in this case would be our contractor who is building the shelter for us. Now the other item that we have listed there, requirement, organic cotton sheets, and the source would be one of the stakeholders. This sounds silly and it is intended to be that way. When I am teaching a class, I want to make sure that there's um, level ground for everybody to participate, meaning there's not a project where we're talking about that's something that's so realistic that somebody has a lot of expertise in and then they dominate the conversation based on their personal experience and then nobody gets to think beyond what somebody else already knows. And so the learning environment as far as having fun, being silly, you know, gives everybody the opportunity to participate. And in this case, it's easier to distinguish a requirement that is a have to have versus a nice to have. So if you get down to the wire as far as a due date or the budget, and you see we have identified there the cost of organic cotton sheets. If you've got to make some cuts somewhere on time or budget, then this is a way of identifying what you can probably cut back on. Additional information you might want to include in your requirements traceability matrix. If you want to trace the information from the actual user requirement to the system requirement and on to the design specification, and then further along into the test script or the actual test case and the number associated with that, even tracing back to your work breakdown structure. And then also, are there other systems or activities, processes that need to be tested as well uh, alongside of what this new project is that you're implementing? As with other information used in your, a project plan, understand that this is a living document you're going to make changes to it. It's not set in stone because requirements evolve as you get into the project and learn new information. Clients often change their mind. If you are in an industry where you are subject to regulatory changes, then you know that sometimes those new regulations take a while to become clarified into a, a format where you can identify what changes you need to make. Also, as you do your research and get into your project, you may stumble across new information that brings about new requirements, things that you didn't know about in the beginning. And sometimes, you know, the business side of the house and the technical side of the house don't always agree on a particular solution. Uh, sometimes you're going to need different levels of detail depending on the different types of requirements that you have. In the previous slide, you know, we don't necessarily need to conduct user acceptance testing on the organic cotton sheets, although you know, there may be some uh, conversation about that. However, it's not really necessary. We, the, the point is you don't have to put information in every single little box on your chart there. And documentation, as thorough as you can get, it's going to help further along down the road in any decisions that need to be made. So to help you get started in creating your own requirements traceability matrix, I'm including an additional document this month with a, an entire list of items that you could include in your matrix. So you can pick and choose among those, or maybe it'll just trigger another thought you have of some other items that you could include in yours. And look at this as a team building effort, just like you would with your work breakdown structure. The project manager doesn't need to do this all by themselves get some folks on your team in there with you to help put this together. Get their input as to what may be relevant information to track. And again, it's not set in stone. Revise it as many times as you need to. So, hope this is helpful information for you and that it serves you well and that you see the value in it. Good luck.